to take root. Today we're in Fayetteville, Arkansas at the home and garden of Mr. Calvin Bay. I was fortunate enough to take Calvin's biological gardening course this past year and I was particularly interested to hear his information on cover crops. So Calvin, why cover crops? Very good question. <laughs> why cover crops? Cover crops are designed for improving the soil. And what that means is that you're going to add organic matter with cover crops and you're in turn going to increase the tilth, in other words, the workability of the soil. Not only that, but the water infiltration will increase, the water holding capacity will increase, and uh, as a result, you'll have a more productive garden. One of the, one of the real critical things um, is when do you plant these cover crops? Ideally, you will plant the first two weeks of September. If you knew for sure that the uh, October was going to be warm, uh, you might be successful planting the last two weeks of September. Uh, there are many choices as far as cover crops are concerned. I've really narrowed it down to three that I recommend for this area, and they are oats, and be sure to distinguish <laughs> oats from wheat because they're quite different in terms of, of growth characteristics. And the second one is Austrian winter peas, and the third one is tillage radish. Now they each have individual characteristics that uh, for, for different, different uses. Second thing to, to think about, and, and this is also very critical, uh, and that is the seeding rate. And uh, you will be surprised how little seed you need to use. So, for oats, one half a cup of seed is all you need. Now, what happens if you put more than that? You get crowding of the plants and the plants tend to be spindly. So, stick to the half cup. For Austrian winter peas, you can get by on a third of a cup for 100 square feet. And for the tillage radish, one tablespoon. That's plenty. One plant for every square foot, it would be adequate. Okay, I've got an area laid out here. It's a small area. It's about 33 square feet, which means, remember, one t tablespoon per hundred. So this is all I would need right here, right there, if I had 100 square feet. But I've only got a third of that, so I'm going to use a teaspoonful. Now, the trick is, how am I going to get this evenly distributed over this area? Well, I'm going to take some of this soil, I'm going to put it in this pail, maybe half a gallon or so, and dump the seed right into the pail. Now, the next thing to do is just to mix that thoroughly. And that's not difficult at all. Find some nice loose soil or use some compost. Screen compost would work the best. Okay, after we've got the seed mixed, the next thing is to take, take this mixed seed and soil and sprinkle it over the entire area. And the reason for the, the soil is just to help to get a better distribution of the seed. And it is not going to come out perfect, but it'll be very close to equal distribution with when you're using this much soil. So I finished this job. I've got all that put on. I want to cover that seed ever so slightly, and so I take my rake just like so. And I do that for the whole thing. Once that's done, I grab my fork and start putting a little bit of straw back on. And I'm not going to put a, a big thick layer of straw here, but I'm going to put enough of straw so that you basically cannot see any of the ground. Cover crops aren't restricted just to vegetable garden beds. Here I have a flower bed I've recently planted about a month and a half ago. Tillage radish and oats right in the flower bed. 
It'll help to improve the soil here just as it does in the vegetable garden. So as you can see, there are a lot of options for growing cover crops. We hope you'll give it a try. For Calvin Bay and the Benton County Master Gardeners, this is Beth Strickland and Take Root. Thank you.